You know, let me begin by saying that religious discussion is always a little bit sensitive, and uh, it's not our intention to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, rather, our intention is just to get to the root of the matter. Uh, we were talking earlier about, on one of our earlier episodes, about uh, how I became Muslim. Uh, basically, was my path through Christianity, or exactly what my path was. And I voiced uh, some of my concerns about Christianity in that episode. The reason why I, pr I myself was not able to uh, accept the tenets of Christian faith. One of the reasons was that uh, Christian faith hinges off of the concept of uh, the atonement, the concept that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Uh, I always had trouble with that concept. Uh, I never understood how Jesus Christ or anybody could die for anybody else's sins. And uh, so that's basically what we decided together to talk about on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the beginning point that I would make is that the concept of the atonement is one of the most simplistic but beautiful formulas uh, that exists for religious salvation. Um, the concept that if you believe in Jesus Christ and you believe that he died for your sins, then that is sufficient for redemption, that is sufficient for salvation, you will have your place in paradise. And uh, I mean, I have to say, sounds good to me. Uh, what do you think? It would be a fool not to accept it. Uh, and that's kind of my point. I mean, my point is, if it were true, and that's the big if, if it were true, um, we would all be fools not for accepting it. It would be the easiest thing just to say, where do I sign on the bottom line and give me my key to paradise? Um, so first of all, we have to validate the concept. We have to ask ourselves, is it true? Did Jesus Christ die for our sins? Um, and I would say, if we're, going to, if we're going to analyze that concept, the first thing we have to do is ask the witnesses. I mean, let's ask the people who were there and who saw it? Okay, let's ask the Bible. Let's ask the Gospels. But there's a problem there. If we're going to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are what, what, is regard, what are regarded as the biblical witnesses. However, the big problem there is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Luke and John were not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and, Luke, and John. Um, this is a very little known fact, but the fact of the matter is that all four Gospels were anonymous. Um, none of them are signed, none of them bear the name of the author. They were given those names out of convenience. Now I'm going to go some, to some notes here because I want to get this letter perfect. and I'm going to read you something, uh, a statement by Graham Stanton, one of, one of the greatest scholars of our time uh, on the New Testament. And he wrote, the Gospels unlike most Greco-Roman writings, are anonymous. The familiar headings which give the name of an author, the Gospel according to, were not part of the original manuscripts, for they were added only early in the second century. Added in the second century? Who added them? Who added those names to the Gospels who we don't know who wrote them? Well, believe it or not, who added them? We don't know that either. Now, <clears throat> I don't mean to get real picky here, but if I were to give anybody out there a book of guidance on anything, a book of guidance on car repair, a book of guidance on astrophysics, something that's going to impact your life, um, something that you want to know the authority of, the first question in your mind is going to be what? I mean, it's going to be who wrote this, right? And yet, here we're being told that the Gospels, the four Gospels, all four Gospels of the Bible are anonymous. I had a problem with that, and I think a lot of other people do. But I tell you what, let's just forget all that, and why not? Because most people forget all that anyway. For the last 2,000 years, we've had sort of this syndrome of, of trying to push that aside. So let's just, for the sake of discussion, put that aside. And instead, uh, let's just look at the scriptural authority. Again, I'm going to read to you. 
The Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible. The Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, now this is obviously a, a Christian work, states, it is safe to say that there is not one sentence in the New Testament in which the manuscript tradition is wholly uniform. Not one sentence. Bart D. Ehrman uh, stated it in terms that I think are perhaps a little bit easier for us to get our, our grasp upon. He said, quote, Possibly it is easiest to put the matter in comparative terms. There are more differences in our manuscripts than there are words in the, in the New Testament. There are more differences in our manuscripts than there are words in the New Testament, which really gives me a, a very good, you know, sound feeling about the Bible. No. And I would just say it shouldn't, it shouldn't give anybody a, a feeling of comfort about the work. We've talked about the fact that, you know, the Gospels were anonymous, many of the other books were anonymous, and now we're hearing that there are more differences in the manuscripts than there are words in the New Testament. So, I don't mean to cut you off, tell me, so just to uh, get this straight, you're telling us that we don't know who actually wrote these books, that Jesus obviously didn't write it, we don't have the Gospel according to Jesus, and uh, many people are under the assumption that these were his companions, these were people that lived with him. Is this correct? Exactly. Exactly. It's not true. And these are the references it, that people can go check so that you're not making this up according to exactly. your... Exactly. And by, by the way, everything that I read you, everything that I tell you, you can find in my articles and, and in my books, which we'll come back to. But the point is that if we look to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we first have to understand we're not reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're reading anonymous, 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 anonymous. Okay, we don't know who wrote them, and there are tremendous differences between them. Let me give you an example, yes. okay? Um, I mean, let's say that you pick up a book of mathematics, and on page one it says one plus one is two, and on page 10 it says one plus one is three. You know there's a problem, right? Big problem. You're, <laughs> you're probably gonna ditch that book pretty fast. Uh, 